Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of this teardown lab. You might recall that a while back I uh, purchased a Garmin Forerunner 645, and it developed a fault whilst on my Endure 24 hour uh, ultra marathon thing. So um, the problem with it was that it was refusing to charge. So I sent it back to Garmin, and they said, Don't worry, we'll send you back another sort of refurbished unit. And look at it, actually, it's like a brand new in-box unit. I mean, to be honest, look, I didn't even send back the strap or the charging clip. They said, don't send back the accessories, just send back the core of the watch. And they've literally, look, it's like they've just sent you back a brand new watch. So if you haven't seen that unboxing video, okay, so there's the clip, there's all the books, and there's actually the watch again. And as far as I can tell, that's a brand new strap. So it's literally a brand new watch they've sent back. So I guess this is the time where I can do a kind of another review because the last review, which some of you have seen on Patreon, was a kind of in my hotel room review. And uh, this is of course uh, an actual real uh, review here. So there you go. Um, you can see on the bottom there, it has the heart rate sensor that's pretty much on all the time. I think you can choose it to be on and off. Um, I'm looking closely, very little signs of wear and tear. I mean, I might even remove this strap to keep it nice and then actually just uh, use my old strap because, um, in, you know, in the lifetime of my other uh, Garmin watch, which was a, a 630, um, I did change the strap once. So the straps actually lasted quite a long time, but they do, uh, they do probably wear out depending on, on your usage. So it's worth uh, just swapping that out. Oh, hang on. It's weird, when you have a watch, I think you have the long one on the top. I just realised I didn't know which way round the sort of long bit of the strap is. And what's nice about these straps, they've got like a little doohickey. So if you actually push this in, and don't worry, I'll zoom in so you can have a proper look here. Do you see there? That little pin, you just bend that in and it just pulls the little pin in. So it just locks nicely like that. And let's get the other side ready and do the same thing. So you, you hold it up. And then you get your whatever you've got really, your tool, and then you push pull that pin in and it locks in. So that's the Garmin, and I'll just show what happens when you turn it on. Um, I was a bit uh, hesitant about this. I mean, again, some people, <laughs> it's that way, isn't it? Um, some people are aware of, uh, did I put the strap on wrong? I'm really getting thrown by this whole strap scenario. Now I'm pretty sure you have the uh, band to your thing. It just feels weird. Okay, so we're going to choose English and we're going to say pair with phone. We ugh, let's do that later. Miles, uh, 12 hours fine. Mail, um, birth yet, <coughs> um, um, height. Um, let's go to six foot odd. Uh, weight 170, about right. Set time using the GPS or manual. We'll say GPS, although that's probably a mistake. And while it's doing that, while it's going to attempt to try to find the GPS, and I'm pretty sure fail. Um, again, I think I've done the strap wrong. That's so wrong, right? The long bit surely comes down. I'm going to work that out. Um, <laughs> so while it's trying to find the GPS, I'll show you a little trick that I do. Uh, and you have to be very careful with this because you don't want to scratch anything. But you see that little tang there? The little tag for pulling off the screen protector, the factory screen protector. If you're very careful with a sharp knife, and I mean very careful, like don't push. It's literally you're just trying to cut. You could probably do it with scissors actually, you probably just lift it and cut it with the scissors. You're probably just trying to put a score in that thing so that will it will just come off without actually, you know, you don't want to actually cut anything on the watch itself. You could do that. Oh. It's so it's so tight. In fact, hang on, let me just, let me get a fresh blade here. Watch your eyes. Mm, I hate these bloody things. They are awful, aren't they? Stupid things. Okay, let's try one more time. And then if not, I'm just going to give up. It's not worth, it's not worth damaging anything for... I, yeah, I think that's it. We got it. We got it. Right, so you can see you've got that nice little edge now. Um, I'm just going to say manual for now. 
Oh, I don't know. Is it? Th that's close enough. Whatever it is. Right year, 2019. June. Oh, what's the day? Look, whatever. Just get on with it. And that's it. That's all the functionality. And it's got loads of functionality on here. Um, what's really cool, if you push start and stop, it goes straight into your activities and you can choose all these activities. If you've got the Garmin Connect app too, you can really customize them on your phone, but you can also do it on the watch itself. And when you load it up first time, it shows you all of this useful uh, information, you know, hints and tips. But basically, um, that's when it's starting to monitor your heart. If you actually have that on your wrist, you'll see right away, it will start to uh, clock that. And there you go, you can see the first data point there and it'll start building a bar graph of your whole day, basically. Um, I'm gonna have to retrain this one, or probably I can, I can. I think if you actually connect it to the Garmin, um, it's not called Garmin Connect, it's called like the Garmin Express app on your PC. You can download it for the PC, it will transfer the data from your old watch to your new one if you've got a, a recent backup. There's your step counter, there's your stress level, uh, and there's there's more though, there's way more. Like it says here, look, more widgets available. And if you click view, you can have what is the last sport, your last run, last, you know, all these things. Compass is cool, temperature. If you've got the Garmin Verb cameras, you can control those. If you've got music uh, controls, you can uh, stop and play and do all the things on your phone. Get your calendar, your notifications from your email, your weather reports, all of this stuff. It's actually a really good uh, watch. It's, it serves as a really good smartwatch as well as a really good running watch. And I don't think you can fault it. If you're looking at the other watches, you know, like the Phoenix and all of these, I mean, if, depending on what you do, if you do basically cycling, and running, I would say get this one, and a bit of swimming. I think you can do a bit of swimming on this, or working in a gym. Um, I think it's a little bit more comprehensive than the, uh, no, this is wrong. <laughs> I've done the strap wrong, I'm sure. The Vivo Active. Um, sorry, I'm just I'm just feeling that. It's just, just so wrong. It's just something not right about this. Is it the wrong way? <laughs> um, you've got the Garmin Vivo Active, which will look um, superficially the same. They've all got the same styling. Um, but it basically uh, lacks um, a lot of the features. I'd say it's more a bit like a Fitbit or a TomTom Tom watch, the Vivo Active, um, than Garmin. And these are definitely uh, pretty hardcore. I know that uh, my other one expired on the charging, so let's try that out. So I'm gonna put the charging clip on here. It uses a pretty standard charging clip, so if you're upgrading from one of your previous models... Ooh, hello. It's buzzing, there you go, 74%, that's good. So it's working this time. If you're using one of your previous models, like the uh, heart straps, you've got the um, the heart's pod, you know, the one of the running dynamics, it works totally with that. So I was running with that and running with the wrist-based heart monitor. I think the strap has still got the edge and it's giving you the dynamics, but to be honest with you, if you don't have a chest strap, I think you'll be okay with this, unless you're really hardcore, you know, looking for really super accurate stats. Um, I think it, it I, I say I think, I definitely know, it works with a number of the cadence pods and the temperature pods and those things like that. So if you do have those pods, you could be able to transfer them over there as well. Uh, I think the only, um, the only thing you can't do as well, I think it's if, you, if you're doing like triathlon, because I'm not sure, you'd have to check this out, it might not work so well with that pod, uh, the chest strap that works underwater. You know the one I'm talking about. If, you, if, you, if, if you've got that need, you'll already be aware of it. So yeah, that's the Garmin 645 in a nutshell. And I have to say something a little bit about Garmin's service. I mean, this was superb. The watch uh, had an issue. I went online to their online chat and I said, look, this is my watch. They went through a bunch of um, remedial ways of trying to fix it and get some charge into it. Uh, none of them worked. Um, to be honest, I'd already tried everything, like resetting it and doing all the, all the things like that. Um, and they said, look, it sounds like there's an issue with the watch. To me, it sounds like there's an issue with the charge circuit because it could, when you plugged it into the USB, the watch kind of knew it was plugged in, but it just wouldn't take charge. It's probably a small fuse. That would be my only gripe with this watch, right? Because what do you notice when you look at this watch front and back? I'll, I'll give you a clue. How the heck do you get into it, right? All the other Garmin watches, you had a hex head screw, like a Torx that you could undo four on the back, pop it off and get in there. I mean, I'd have been tempted to get in there and try to actually repair this because it would have been a cool video. But, you know, like modern smartphones, it doesn't have it. And as far as I'm aware, this back is a sealed, sealed unit. So what you've got to do is apply a bunch of heat to the front and then just literally pop that off. And it's all like, you know, adhesive and hot glue and... 
Once that's done, I'm not sure it's going to retain its uh, waterproofness because I do believe, if we check the packet, it is uh, still waterproof to whatever, you know, atmospheres. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Water rating, five atmospheres. There you go. Seven days... Um, battery life 14 hours gps mode i don't know i think i was getting more than seven days to be fair um your mileage may vary it probably depends on how much of the you know other things you use supports the wrist-based heart rate garmin pay running dynamics training status and connect i to you so remember there's a certain amount of running dynamics and training status you always used to get from the heart pod if you had the heart rate monitor so it could calculate your vo2 max and those sorts of things now it can do it straight from your wrist which is kind of cool but i guess if you've got that heart pod it will give it additional information and more accuracy on that one um, i do love that i love the fact that it tells you how long you need to rest for after you've done a long training session and things like that so all i can say is i've put on my last on my last watch i put on probably about 50 miles of running that includes training treadmill miles uh, training road miles and event miles and it was a bloody good watch and even though it developed a little fault they replaced it right out and i went on all the internet forums no one else seems to have had that fault it's it seems to be an extreme rarity there's no one in forums moaning about it so it's probably just an anomaly if you're tempted to get the 645 music if you're likely to have your mobile phone with you on you know with you as well i don't see any advantage to that the, you know the 645 music allows you to connect up spotify and some other things to download music to your watch so you can listen to it direct from this on bluetooth but for me it wasn't really a worthwhile option because i always have my phone on me anyway and i'd rather save the battery on the watch so for example if you're doing a long event you could see it said there 14 hours um in the uh, endurance race, that was a 24-hour endurance race. So fortunately, the watch wasn't recording all the time because you were having a little bit of downtime between. But if you were really running or on, the, on your feet for 24 hours, you'd be really annoyed because the battery life might die 10 hours in. And I bet if you're listening to that uh, MP3 music and Bluetooth, it's going to be significantly less. By the way, you might see the screen here is actually pretty re readable even when it's off. The backlight comes on at night or when, when I push this button. There is a backlight there, but you can't really see that it's got basically a trans reflective display which is totally unlike your smartphone uh, smartwatch um, you know your Apple watch or your uh, Samsung or LG or whatever watch but it really extends the battery life and when you're outside um, doing all your sports and stuff it's super readable um, I think it does have a wrist detection because I do remember when I was running at night I, I don't know I think if I just flicked my wrist the backlight came on I think it was okay there was I don't remember any issue with having to push the lights or fumbling with it, it's fine. Whatever, whatever the uh, modus operandi of this watch, whether or not I was pushing the button or if it was doing myself, uh, uh, doing it itself on the wrist flick, I don't remember. But it was absolutely fine. There is really no gripes. The only thing about this is that there is a slight learning curve from the 630 because you're losing the touch screen. But if you're going from any of the uh, previous watches, even from the Garmin 25 onwards, you're used to this up, down, back, start, light combination and i'll just show you by the way if you hold down the light button there you go you get a groovy menu here and that's where all your little power off timer stopwatch wallet lock keys do not disturb and what's really neat by the way in the lock keys mode it can automatically lock the keys now on this watch so you can just say oh, automatically lock keys and it detects once you're sort of in an event or something you don't have to worry about bumping those buttons uh, just to unlock it i think you just hold down down or one of the buttons it tells you you know just hold down that for a couple of seconds and then get going because there's nothing worse than having a watch running in, in the middle of an event and then you accidentally hitting stop or, or you know any other buttons really that you shouldn't be hitting you just don't want to do that also if you hold down this up button um, that's where you get to change all the little settings, watch face, alarm clock, history settings, and there'll be lots of cool history and cool analysis on this. That's the one thing you do get about this watch, which is super awesome, is that when it's running, um, once you've been wearing it for a while, and especially if you've been training with it, it really knows you inside out. I promise you, when you go running, it will give you a performance indicator. It knows when you're tired. It knows when you're full of energy. It's predicting how long your run's going to take. It's predicting your half marathon, your 5K times. Um, it's really good. It's like your personal coach, your personal buddy. And of course, it's syncing to Garmin Connect on the Garmin Connect application. Um, 
which is giving you way more insights. I mean, I, I could show you now, but you'll get bored. It's giving you so much analysis of your movements and running and your exercise that you, you can actually, you know, you, if you discover you've got injury that's happening on your left leg, you'll see it in the data. You'll see it saying you're running too hard on your left leg and you start moving it, you know, you start changing the way you run and pushing that weight back onto your right. It'll tell you when you've got a 50-50 balance and you'll feel that pain go away. Um, it'll tell you how long to recover. It'll tell you... Um, What's your maximum heart rate? And you'll get that. If you're doing hill training, uh, you'll, it'll be spot on. You'll see that. When you're getting to that VO2 max, everything like that, you'll see it is spot on with it. It knows. And if you push yourself, though, oh, it doesn't mean stop yourself pushing yourself. If you push yourself, it'll say, yeah, you're doing good. We're resetting this now. You're, you've, you've changed your, your variable. We, we're, we're pushing the envelope now. And it will do that, too. So there you go. That's your running buddy. Let me know if you've got a Garmin watch and what you feel about it. And... Um, please feel free to hit me on Discord. And look, there you go, training set is used for one week for the VO2 max. So it, see, it needs to know you, it gets to know you. Um, hopefully that's been of some use to you. Uh, if you've got that, as I say, Garmin watches, please let me know what, if you uh, enjoy using them as well. As ever, thank you for watching. Oh, there's a pun there, watching. <laughs>